Hi again guys, it's me, Kirkus R. Monte Alto, a grade 12 STEM student from Notre Dame of the Youngest University. For today's video, we are going to do a simple home fermentation. And the simple home fermentation that we are going to do is a kimchi as a part of our finals performance desk in General Biology 1. So without further ado, let's get started! Oh, I almost forgot before we're going to do the procedure. Let us go teleport first in our kitchen and change ourselves into a lab coat. In three, two, one. So now guys, we are now at our lab coat and we are now ready to prepare our fermentation food, which is kimchi. So without further ado, let's go. So here are now the ingredients that we are going to use for this fermentation. First of all, we have the Chinese cabbage. You can also use Napa cabbage, which is famous in the Korean, but unfortunately, it is not available on the grocery store. And white radish, and a spring onion, white onion, and a garlic cloves. And of course, a kimchi would not be a kimchi without the Korean red pepper flakes. So you can also add carrots, but I did not want carrots, so I did not include it in the ingredients. So without further ado, let's get going to the procedure. So first, we are going to cut this Napa cabbage into a one inch wide strips. And now let's peel off the radish and cut it into a thick lengthwise. And also our spring onions, cut it into a small segments. And now, let us put the Chinese cabbage on the container or in a bowl and season it heavily with a salt. And now, mix it with our bare hands because our goal is to bruise the cabbage. Then, you set aside it in an R. And now, we have a food blender. We're going to open it and put our garlic and onion into it. And now, let's close the food blender and start juicing the garlic and the onion. And now, we are going to mix it with the Korean pepper flakes. Let us use disposable gloves in mixing this one because it's too spicy on our skin. And now, let us start washing our Chinese cabbage thoroughly with water. Put the ingredients together the radish and the spring onions let us now mix the paste to the ingredients that we have remember to mix it thoroughly so that all of the ingredients could have the paste tada we have now the kimchi and let's put it in the jar we are going to use the spoon so we can pack it together as possible let us clean the external part of the jar and let's close it tightly. So now our kimchi is ready to ferment. And of course, let us don't forget to label when did we start the fermentation. And a fun fact, kimchi's fermentation is only 4 to 7 days and make sure to taste your kimchi at the day 4. And if it fits now into your preference, you can now stop the fermentation and store it in our refrigerator. At the day 3 journey, you can notice that there is a tiny little air bubble. It's normal because it is the lactobacillus bacteria and the other good bacteria that is releasing carbon dioxide and it's totally normal. And finally, we're at the day 4 when we are going to open the kimchi. So now guys, we are now at the taste test. Some of people tend to believe that kimchi really goes well with some gyupsal or in the shabu-shabu. And I'm here to try it. Here we have the 
ordinary pork cutlet and here we have the pork cutlet that is marinated with the Korean red pepper, um, ham, and the tocino roll. And now we are going to open now our kimchi. It's so hard. Mm. Mm. It has the smell of the garlic and the onion that we have blended with the Korean sauce. And it's... Mm. The smell is something peculiar. And now let's go with the taste of it. Let's try the taste of it. First, let us try tasting this without this samgyupsal, the shabu shabu that we have prepared. Mm. Mm. It has this peculiar taste of sourness and its aftertaste of spiciness. And oh, it's spicy. It it is that really spicy, and I don't know why people tend to buy this kimchi. But it's good. It's sour because of the lacto fermentation, the lactic um, bacteria that we have accumulated during the fermentation. And now let's try it with the shabu shabu or the um, meat that we have prepared here. So first, I'm going to try with this plain because it's the kimchi itself is spicy. It tastes good though. The sourness and the spiciness of the kimchi goes really well with the plain pork cutlet. And let's try with the pork cutlet that is marinated with the Korean red bell pepper sauce. It's really good. It really goes well with the flavor of the marinated pork cutlet with the ham and the tocino roll and to the excess of the leafy vegetables that I have during the fermentation. So far, I will go to rate this homemade fermentation of kimchi um, 8 over 10. Yeah, that's it. Mm, mangan kayon! So that wraps up our video. I hope you have learned and enjoyed watching my video. So now you are now aware how simple fermentation in our home works. So this is Kirkis R. Monteotto saying keep safe, keep sane, and stay hydrated. Bye!